Welcome back to the channel and to any new viewers we might have picked up yesterday with the PGA Tour 2K23 reveal video. Um, welcome to the channel. This is the kind of stuff we do just for the previous game. Um, we're in the process of doing a 2K21 routing challenge. At the moment I've had 30 odd submissions, which is amazing. It's way beyond what I thought we'd get. If you're interested and you're on PC and you have the designer, do check out the previous video, which I'll link below now, so that you've got that and come back and join us later. Now, for those of you who are still here with us, what we're going to look at today is like tips of making the most of the plot, having a bit of a look at the plot itself, um, where it could be tricky and kind of the things that this was particularly testing. And kind of, I guess like, the big mistakes that I've seen people make as well as the things that people have done really, really well. So without further ado, we're going to leap into the plot and have a little look at that now. So here we are, and this is the bit of land that you're working with. Now, first of all, it's quite an awkward length and width. Well, not really awkward length. Lengthwise, you've got loads. Width-wise, you've only got 500 yards to the part here, but it shrinks massively towards this part, so 355 or so. You do have a beachy area, which everyone will be drawn to, but getting in and out of that, in and around the dunes, is not going to necessarily be the easiest to do. And it became a real kind of jigsaw puzzle of how you could get in and out and whether you wanted to use this area. There's comfortably enough land for 18 holes, you just have to be clever with how you use it. To complicate matters a little bit more, you've got this creek, which is not my finest work, but it will do. Um, this one was really there to pinch this part of the land as well, make you think, well, if you went over it, what are you doing once you are there? Um, and it's been interesting that a couple of people have avoided using this section altogether. Uh, some people have put as many holes down here as possible. Some have just made the most of it with one hole or two holes. That's definitely been something people have gravitated towards, which has been really cool to see. The next thing that you wanted to be really careful of, with was the dunes and how they complicate matters. Now, for a reminder, we'd said that you weren't a, you're basically thinking as if you can't sculpt more than five feet, so minimal land movement. Now five feet, just for reference, looks like this, very little. So essentially we're just using it to massage sidelines. You're trying to find holes that are already there. So if you are a sort of person who roots from up here and goes, oh, that's 300 and then we can go that way and then we can go this way, you've missed the point of the challenge immediately because you're not really looking at ground level. Now, when we then think about how this all works, my big suggestion, I think the thing that has differentiated the very good routings I've had from the less good ones, has been the people who clearly started with green sites versus the people who started with tees. Um, it's quite clear that you've got some people who will go, well, OK, I can have a tee shot down here. That's 300 odd. Um, where can we go next? And you've just got greens that are kind of like there. It's OK. It's just a bit nothingy. Or you've got the people who've gone, Actually, you know what? There's a really good green site, let's say up here. Not, not one I've seen used often, but people have used that. Well, okay, if we pull that back and find an approach shot here, well, then how do we get to here? Are we going to come across this way? Are we going to come down the beach? And then kind of stringing holes together that way. Now, it's hard to spot people's thought processes with that, but over the course of 18 holes, you can tell when people have really carefully looked at green sites and varying those. I think that's the biggest thing with something like this. Now, in terms of what a good green site looks like, you want to think about the approach shot that's coming in. If you've got a flatter portion of land, let's say we're looking somewhere up here, well, that to me seems like a part five or a long part three or a very long part four. Basically, you want a running approach that's going to be able to bounce and kind of go in a predictable sort of way. You don't really want to be hitting a wedge shot into that because there's not much to work with unless you heavily bunker it. You want to be thinking about also the amount of blind shots you've got. If you are going to go over something like this, how are you going to do it? A couple of people have done it on par threes, which has been really fun. Do you want to go over it on a par four? If so, you want to be considering how you're doing it and when and how often. Let's say, for example, I want to get over this bit of land. Well, if I'm trying desperately to fit a hole that goes up here, say, Going over that one dune on a tee shot creates a really interesting tee shot view and it does traverse this giant dune in one way and then frees us up to do whatever we want with the rest of the hole. 
it can be much better than say simply going oh here's a dune ridge that i just can't i've got to work around i've got a dog leg around it sometimes going straight over it can be much more interesting now the other things that kind of complicated this from the dune ridge point of view were these ones near the coast you wanted to think about how you were getting in and out but also there was this diagonal dune ridge that i put in kind of reminiscent of rye um, and you've got another one here as well how you traverse those where you banked greens into them was something very much to think about i think the other thing that i would suggest was if you were trying to make the most of this plot you want to think really carefully about which holes you are putting preference on so and what i mean by that is r3s normally i will typically look for the most stunning parts of the property and put them there first but this one i actually use my r threes far more as transition holes or holes that i kind of knew that on this sort of a plot find a 150 yard shot anywhere like there's l so much space for those what's far harder is finding 500 600 yards and where are they going to go well they're typically going to go in this direction but i wanted them to dog leg a little bit as well so will you have some going this way will you have some going up here and then turning etc so with my mind thinking those are going to be harder jigsaw pieces to fit in but carrying that not analogy along Based on that, my path threes could then be the like easier, like imagine a game of Tetris where you've got a one piece that's just a little square. I can go anywhere. Whereas the path fives are more awkward, I've got to find those first. And it's clear that a couple of people have looked at it like that. Some people have just abandoned the concept of what a typical course should be in terms of par distributions, etc. I think that's fun as well. It's clear that some people have just gone hole by hole and gone, well. I'm going to put a clubhouse down, let's say here. And therefore, my first hole is going to go over here. Yeah, water's in play, great. And we're just going to go and keep finding holes from there. Some people, however, have gone for a more macro approach and gone, well, I want to go down to the coast this way, and then we're going to loop around, and we'll come back up this way, and then we'll come up the water, and then we'll cross over and go back here that's not a wrong way to do it like, and then you can go and find holes in that sort of area because you know you're always getting back that can be a cool way of doing it and you can throw in a couple of little twists to that as well you can go out and then back in things like that that can work nicely so there's, again just thoughts no right way or wrong way to do it necessarily one final thing i'd suggest with the path threes as transition holes is you can squeeze them in really efficiently when you look at how you do it and this is something i really picked up from sandbelt courses and looking at them sandbelt courses again let's say our par four is here and let's say we've got a t going this way as well i'm putting another par four back there well you can have a par three that goes just behind them that uses up barely any space you've got a green here but you were keeping this area free for a t anyway and this area is your green as well this barely takes up any space whatsoever in comparison to where you might want to put it here or out here if you constantly think about walking forwards from a t and going well i've got to go forwards and go in this direction you're actually losing quite a lot of space let's imagine we push this even further if you come off your first green and go dead left and then play dead right well we're using even less space out this way and we could then fit a t up here as well once you start looking at it like that and thinking, well, what could we do? That might be something that frees you up a little bit more in terms of the space as well. Like I say, there wasn't a right answer or a wrong answer to any of this. I think those are my key things with this. The, part, the main one that you absolutely have to be doing is looking really closely at the land, looking at this sort of level for your green sites. If you are looking at it from up here, you have no shots with how you're trying to do this. Oh, that's not fair. You can do it. But you're, you're missing out on so many of the intricacies that you could have on finding some really cool green sites. And I think the second thing is find your green sites first and then think, well, how can I get to them? I thought some of the best ones I've seen were people, I mean, Energizer streamed his, he did this sort of thing, going around and just finding little green sites, popping down measure tools. I'm doing it really quickly with zero thought of what I'm doing. Um, I'm just going, yeah, we could put a green somewhere in here. And then going around and going, well, how do we work to as many of those as possible? I think that sort of approach can also give you real creativity and going, well, I've got a green site up here. Well, what if I came at it from down here? I actually really like that. 
and then I'd be looking at this approach and going, I desperately want you to have that shot. Like that looks awesome. So how can we find a path, a, a tee shot that gets you down to there? And I'm coming up to here and going, well, from here though, I'd have never seen that hole. But I think that's quite interesting. So just a few thoughts of how you might go about it. Hopefully that's been interesting. See you again soon and do enter if you haven't done already.